Good evening, friends. Today is Wednesday. Once again, we are here in our Catholic program, apologetics program in DYRF every 8 to 9.30 p.m. every Wednesday. Centericum Ecclesia to think with the church. Ang pag-iisip sa kaisipan ng simbahang katoliko. Ang paghunahuna sa hunahuna gayod sa simbahang katoliko. O ang atong tema karon or topic that we will discuss is all about Christmas. Ang atong pagsaulog sa adlaw na tawan sa itong ginoo. But before starting our discussion for tonight, let's make an opening prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Let us pray one our Father, one Hail Mary, and one Glory be. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now to our our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, so never shall be, world without an amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead us out to heaven, especially those who did most of our divine mercy. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out, and may the reading of the gospel be to us salvation and protection. And may Christ, the Son of God, teach us the words of the Holy Gospel. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merry Christmas, everyone, everybody, and advance Happy New Year. This month of December, we have just celebrated uh, the Christmas season, the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a very important topic that we have to discuss tonight since uh, even many Catholics also doesn't know the basis for celebrating Christmas and most especially our Protestant brothers, the non-Catholic brothers of ours, they also uh, just ride with the Catholic Church about celebrating Christmas and they don't know exactly why we celebrate on a certain day, especially December 24 in the on midnight that is already December 25 every year the whole Roman Catholic Church the whole Greek Orthodox Church the whole uh, Christian Church except for a few sects and denominations celebrate Christmas now in the Catholic Church the celebration is the most elaborate because we started having a Novena Mass on December 16th, counting nine days, yung tinatawag natin Simbang Gabi, or Misa de Gallo in Spanish, until the ninth day, which is uh, falling on the 24th early morning, and then we still have the uh, Mass on 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock p.m. before the 12 midnight time on December 24th. That makes it like the time of Pentecost in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2 verse 1 that makes it 9 to 10 days in our attending Holy Mass for the Misa de Gallo or the Simbang Gabi. Now, we are sure that in the scriptures, the Bible, since God became man, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior became man, that He has a birthday. We can read here in the Holy Bible, the Dewey Rams Version. Let us read in the scriptures, first in the Gospel according to St. John the Apostle, St. John the Evangelist, the Theologian. In the Holy Bible, Dewey Rams Version, John chapter 1, verse 1, comma, verse 14, comma, verse 18. The divinity and incarnation of Christ, John bears witness of him. He begins to call his disciples. John chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. The title here is Divinity and Incarnation of Christ. Incarnation simply means, in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh. Ang salita ay naging laman, o ang salita ay naging tao, and dwelt among us. And we saw His glory, the glory as it is where, the of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18, No man hath seen God at any time. 
the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. John chapter 1, verse 1, comma 14, comma verse 18. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, let us read the Gospel of St. Matthew. It reads in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. The whereas version, the Holy Bible. Now the generation of Christ was in this wise. When his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Whereupon Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willingly publicly to expose her, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in his sleep, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which the Lord spoke by the prophet, saying, Verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be a child, and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, rising up from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took unto him his wife, and he knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. So only the Catholic Church and Greek Orthodox Church and other Catholic churches all over the world, including the Oriental churches, who are now in communion with Rome, sings every December, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. So we really call literally Jesus Christ our Lord as Emmanuel, God with us. That is in fulfillment of His name that shall be called by His people. So one of the mark that we, the Roman Catholic Church, and with all Christians who are in communion with the Catholic Church in celebrating Christmas, the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, are the true people of God. Tayo ang tunay na mga tao ng Diyos sapagkat tinatawag talaga natin siya literally every year. Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 in the Old Testament, it reads, For a child is born to us, and a son is given to us, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, God the Mighty, o ito yung Emmanuel, God the Mighty, the Father of the world to come, and the Prince of Peace. His empire shall be multiplied, and there shall be no end of peace. He shall sit upon the throne of David, and upon the kingdom, to establish it, and strengthen it with judgment and with justice, from henceforth and forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. So, God the mighty, this is the Son of God. A Son is given to us. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and no other person became man and established His empire, His church, His kingdom on the throne of David, meaning in Israel. And then He will establish it forever and ever because He Himself will perform and do this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. That is why from Pentecost until now and until kingdom come, until when Christ comes back to judge the living and the dead, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 14, the word of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, which I have just read earlier, shall be fulfilled. The Catholic Church, which is the kingdom of Christ here on earth, extended from his throne in heaven, Daniel 2.44 will never be destroyed. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, and Daniel 2, 44. It is indestructible. It cannot be destroyed because Christ has promised His church, His kingdom. In Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, it is the doing of the Lord that He will establish His kingdom, His church, forever and ever, and it shall not be moved. Daniel 2, 44, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, fulfilled in Matthew 16, 18, 19. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. In Isaiah 7, 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. This is the verse that Matthew, St. Matthew the Evangelist quoted from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. So this is the sign. We have the Blessed Virgin Mary. And this shall sign shall always be there. Meaning the Virgin Mary shall always be a virgin and remain a virgin 
Otherwise, the sign of God will not be there anymore. There will be no sign anymore from God. So the Catholic Church also have the uh, dogma of the perpetual virginity of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the person of our mother, Blessed Mother, Blessed Virgin Mary, based on this verse, Isaiah 7.14, quoted by Matthew in Matthew 1.23, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. So the true Emmanuel, the true Christ, amidst the many false Christ and false messiahs that shall come even in the time of Christ, even before Christ, and most especially after Christ, and especially during our times, in the end times. There are now many Christ, false Christ, and false Messiah. The Antichrist shall come. But we can see that the sign is very clear that the Roman Catholic Church has the true Emmanuel, God with us, the God who, who became man in John 1, 1, 14, 18. Why? Because in Matthew 1, 23 and Isaiah 7, 14, the sign is that her mother shall remain always a virgin. She will be conceiving as a virgin without the need and instrumentality of any man on earth, with Jesus without a human father, and she will become a virgin still until she gave birth to his only son, Jesus our Lord. Because here it's always only singular. Virgin shall conceive and bear a son, meaning that is the state of Mary as a sign of God. As she will be remain started and remain a virgin because Jesus, his only son, singular son, a son, will always be the only son he will have till her assumption into heaven as queen of heaven and earth, Isaiah 7.14. And it is repeated also in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 8 to 10. Do I Ram's version, Holy Scriptures, Holy Bible. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 8 to 10. And shall pass through Judah overflowing, and going over shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land. O Emmanuel, gather yourselves together, O ye people, and be overcome and give ear, all ye lands afar off. Strengthen yourselves and be overcome. Gird yourselves and be overcome. Take counsel together and it shall be defeated. Speak a word and it shall not be done because God is with us. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 8 to 10. That is why we gather together as a people to meet Emmanuel. Isaiah 4.12 Prepare to meet thy God. The first coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is to save us. Matthew 1.23 Name him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. That is why we gather together according to the word of the prophet Isaiah, as I have read earlier, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 8 to 10. Gather yourselves together, O you people, for behold, because God is with us, or Emmanuel, Isaiah 8, 8 to 10. But many Christians, of course, claiming to be Christians, but they do not welcome Jesus Christ's first coming by not celebrating Christmas or the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, what happened during the time of Jesus Christ? Israel did not did not welcome Jesus. They do not recognize that the Son of God became man, became Son of Man, and then was born on a manger. There in Bethlehem, nobody knows, but only her parents, his parents, of course, the Blessed Mother Mary and Saint Joseph, his foster father, and the shepherds of the field invited by the angels and also the three wise men. These are this only symbolize that the pagan nations in the person of the three wise men will recognize and accept the messiahship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as Savior of the world. Not only the Savior of Israel, but Savior of the world. Anybody who who believes and accepts Jesus Christ in faith, John 3 16 shall be part of the people of God. For God so loved the world that the Son is only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. King James Version in John chapter 3, verse 16. According to the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, the prophet Isaiah prophesied about the lamentation of God that the people of Israel did not recognize Him when He came on earth. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The prophet complains of the sins of Judah and Jerusalem, exhorts them to a sincere conversion. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which is so concerning Judah and Jerusalem, in the days of Isaiah, Jonathan, and Achaz, and Ezekiah, kings of Judah, 
Hear ye, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have brought up children and exalted them, but they have despised me. Verse 3, The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's scribe. But Israel hath not known me, and my people hath not understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a wicked seed and gracious children. They have forsaken the Lord, they have blasphemed the Holy One of Israel. They are gone away backwards. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. You see friends, those people who do not welcome the coming, the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they do not celebrate birthday. They are people who are a sinful nation. We know for a fact, even in the Christian denominations such as Seventh-day Adventist, Jehovah's Witness, Churches of God, Iglesia ng Diyos, ang dating daan, they do not celebrate Pasko o Christmas. Ito pala sila, according to the Bible, ni Isaiah, are sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. They are a wicked seed, ungracious children. Ingrato ba? Kasi tinubos at niligtas tayo ng Diyos, Naging tao siya, pumunta siya dito para tubusin tayo sa ating kasalanan. Matthew 1.21, Matthew 1.21, and yet we do not welcome him. We do not celebrate his birthday. We celebrate our own birthday, the birthday or foundations of their churches, but they do not celebrate the birthday of Christ, also the Iglesia ni Cristo, ni Felix Manalo, another Protestant and religious sex and denomination. Therefore, they are ungracious children of God. According to the scriptures, they do not know the owner. They do not know really the true Messiah, the true Savior. They, Israel hath known me, and my people hath not understood. Kasi ba ang katuliko, nakilala natin ang ating Panginoong Diyos na si Kristo, na naging tao. We know Him, His person, perfectly well. Kaya nga ang mga potestante, hindi nila alam talaga ang kinikilala nila, ang tunay na Diyos. Bakit? Kasi hindi sila makakaintindi. They would not understand. They would not know Him. Sa birthday pa lang, pagdating pa lang, hindi inalam eh. So, how can you know everything about the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when on the first instance of His presence and coming on earth, when He was born on the manger in Bethlehem by the Blessed Virgin Mary, then we do not celebrate Him. We do not welcome Him. We celebrate His person. The event is a big event because it is the person, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, God who became man. John 1, 1, 14, Kama 18, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. Now let us read the Greek Bible. Here, the Greek-English Interlinear New Testament. Let us read in Matthew 1, 18. In the original Greek, Jesus really literally has a birthday because the Blessed Virgin Mary gave birth to him on the manger. Let us read uh, Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 here in the interlinear New Greek English interlinear New Testament. Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 And Jacob, Father Joseph, the husband of Mary, from whom was born Jesus, the one being called Christ, Egeneste, was born Jesus, His Egeneste, Jesus. Oh, very clear. And verse 18, now of Jesus Christ, the birth was thus. Blessed Virgin Mary was being engaged, the mother of him, Mary, to Joseph before they came together. She was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, to the Yesu Christo, he genesis, or he genesis or geneste, hotos hen, a very clear. Mm. And she was found in gastre exusa, she was found pregnant, ek pneumatos hagyo, she was found pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So, genesis, genese, genesis or geneste, that is the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, and th there is a day. So, birthday of Jesus, Guinness Day, and in the Greek, the word day is Emera, or in the Latin days, D-I-E-S, days. So, Jesus has a birthday, Matthew 1, 18 to 25. 
Now, our Protestant fathers do not recognize the birthday of Jesus. There must be a birthday of Jesus because God made man uh, was given birth by his earthly mother on a certain day and that is the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Christmas is equivalent to birthday because Christ mass that is the mass kaya nga may misa di galyo tayo uh, we we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the mass in honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ kaya tinawag yan sa Christianity since early times as Christmas Christmas the mass of Christ or the celebration of Christ that is simply the meaning of the word Christmas the celebration the of the mass of Christ because Christ is the perfect sacrifice we offer to God and nothing else now we will read the living Bible in Matthew chapter 2 where Christ was born what place and the circumstance on which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born is in Matthew chapter 2 verse 1 to 11 the scriptures read here, the Living Bible Translation of our Protestant Brothers. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem, in Judea, during the reign of King Herod. Again, here, the word born, genestai, or genesis. At about that time, some astrologers from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in far off Eastern lands, and have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed by their question, and all Jerusalem was filled with rumors. Literally, in old Jerusalem with him. Now, these three kings, uh, we know that they were three because of the gifts that they brought. There are three gifts that the three kings offered to Jesus. Matthew 2.11 And they came off from far off eastern lands. This is also where the Iglesia Ni Cristo by Felix Manalo or the INC, Church of Christ here in the Philippines, founded by Felix Manalo in Punta Santa Manila, 1914 is wrong that the far east is the philippines no during the time of the old testament and the new testament the far eastern lands the far east letter by letter here in matthew 2 3 living bible translation far off eastern lands or the far east a fulfillment of Ma isaiah 43 verse 5 to 6 in the old testament this is the area of babylon of iraq the area of Saudi Arabia, the whole area of Sudan in Africa, and these far away lands uh, in the east or the or the silangan ng araw. Hindi itong Pilipinas na pakalayo na masyado. <laughs> this is the far east in the modern times, but in the times of the Bible, the biblical times, in the Old and New Testament, even the time of Jesus and the apostles, the far east lands are just the Near Eastern lands today, that is in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and other nations and countries. He called the meeting of the Jewish religious leaders, Herod. Did the prophets tell us where the Messiah would be born? He asked, yes, in Bethlehem. They said, quoting Micah chapter 5, verse 2 and 3, For this is what the prophet Micah wrote, O little town of Bethlehem, uh, you are just not just an unimportant Judean village, for a governor shall rise from you to rule my people Israel. Then he will send a private message to the astrologers, asking them to come to see him. At this meeting, he found out from them the exact time when they first saw the star. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can also go and worship him too. After this interview, the astrologers started out again. And look, the star appeared to them again. And standing over Bethlehem, their joy knew no bounds. Entering the house where the baby and Mary's mother were, they threw themselves before him, worshipping. Then they opened their presents. What are the presents? There are three. And gave him gold, eat frankincense, and myrrh. So we conclude that there are three kings who visited Jesus. Matthew 2, 1 to 11. Because in verse 11, specifically, they brought with them three gifts. We cannot think that every king has these three gifts. They must have different gifts. So, logically, every king has another gift, and these are only three gifts, not more than three, not four, not five. So, there is not a fourth king or a fifth king, and there is not only one king, because it is plural kings from the east. 
or the magi meaning plural because the singular is magus so there is more than one now not only two because there are uh, three gifts so there are really three kings logically from matthew to 11 that's why we also celebrate on january 6 the last day of christmas season the feast of three kings ang kapistahan ng tatlong hari matthew 2 1 hanggang 11 so we have that biblical basis and the three kings represents the pagan nations the gentiles and it is also prophesied in isaiah chapter 65 Verse 1 to 2. Let us read here. They have sought me that ask before not ask for me. They have found me that sought me not. I said, Behold me. Behold me to a nation that it call upon my name. I have spread forth my hands all the day to an unbelieving people who walk in a way that is not good after their own thoughts. In Isaiah chapter 60, 60 verse 1 to 2 to 3 it reads the light of true faith shall send forth in the church of christ and shall be spread through all nations and continue for religious arise be enlightened o jerusalem for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon thee for behold darkness shall cover the earth and amidst the people but the lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the gentiles shall walk in thy light and kings in the brightness of thy rising you see, friends, it is very clear. Lift up thy eyes round about and see, and all these are gathered together. They are come to thee. Thy son shall come from afar, and thy daughter shall rise up at thy side. Thou sh then thou shalt see and abound, and thy heart shall wander and be enlarged. When the multitude of the sea shall be converted to thee, the strength of the gentiles shall come to thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Majan and Epha, all day from Saba, shall come. There are three places, Majan, which is Midjan, and now Saudi Arabia, and then Ifa, this is Ethiopia. All they come from Saba. This is somewhere part of uh, Spain or, or from the Europe. Shall come, bringing forth cold frankincense. You see, there are three places where they come from, the three kings. Isaiah 60, verse 6. Medjan and Aifa and Saba and they're bringing also three gold frankincense in Matthew 2 11 mere gold frankincense and mere bringing gold and frankincense and showing forth praise to the Lord and the flux of Sidar meaning Saudi Arabia the Arabian the Arabs shall be gathered together unto thee the rams of Naboath shall minister to thee they shall be offered upon my acceptable altar and I will glorify the house of my majesty Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 7. This is also a verse, a prophecy of celebration of the Gentiles, the people of God, the Gentiles already with Israel. That is fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. Now, in Psalms chapter 72, verse 10. So, I hope the Protestant brothers of ours who are following our program will also learn from the scriptures. This is the basis of of why the Catholic Church celebrated elaborately the celebration of Christmas, even the three kings, Psalms chapter 72, verse 10, it reads, And the kings of Tartus and the islands shall offer presents. The kings of the Arabians, uh, here in Isaiah 60, verse 6, Arabia stands for Sidar or Kedar, and of Saba, and shall bring gifts. So there are three places, Tartus and the islands, the Arabians, Arab, and Saba, inconsistent with Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 7. So they will bring gifts, and all kings of the earth shall adore him, all nations shall serve him, for he shall deliver the poor from the mighty, and the needy that had no helper. Psalms chapter 71, verse 10 to 12, Duai Rams, Holy Bible, Duai Rams version. But it is in Psalm 72, 10 to 12, in other versions, Catholic and Protestants, of this same verse in Psalm 71, 10 to 12 of the Dewey Rams version. Now, that is why we celebrate three kings because it is prophesied and it is fulfilled in the New Testament, Matthew 2, 1 to 11. Now, other guests also of Jesus who recognize him are the shepherds in Israel. This is where the Protestant would base their argument that Christmas Day or the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could not happen on December because they claim that December in Israel 
especially in Jerusalem, is still uh, winter time. Jerusalem is on a high place. Of course, during December, uh, snow is filling also the parts of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem is uh, above sea level. It is almost on uh, a hilly part. It is uh, elevated place or locality. But Jesus Christ is not born in Jerusalem. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. This this Bethlehem is uh, many kilometers away from Jerusalem. And this is on a, a plain because uh, shepherds are flocking their sheep on that plain. Therefore, it is not yet not yet winter. Otherwise, uh, these shepherds would not let their let their sheep be flocked on the plains of Bethlehem, outside of Bethlehem. Let us read Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to until verse 20. The birth of Christ. Oh, here we, we have also another uh, title, the birth of Christ, the birthday of Christ. In the Dewey version, the Holy Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20, his presentation in the temple, Simeon's prophecy, Christ at 12 years of age is found amongst the doctors. And it came to pass that in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This enrolling was first made by Serenius, the governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, everyone unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his spouse wife, who was with child. And it came to pass that when they were there, the, her days were accomplished, that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. You see, friends, Christ was born on a manger. There was a certain day in which Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was born in Bethlehem. And then Joseph and Mary went over there because this was a census during this time, a decree from Caesar Augustus, the emperor of Rome, the pagan emperor of the Roman pagan empire of Rome. They were also enrolled where in Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary. So the the registration of Joseph and Mary and including his their son, the firstborn son of Mary, Jesus Christ, was enrolled there in the list of Serenius during the time in Bethlehem. So this list, the birthday and the place where you live, your address and your birthday, these are supposed to be written on the list on the on the census. So this was a written record of our birth of our Savior Jesus Christ. That was on December twenty four midnight, December twenty five. This was already submitted to to the Roman Emperor during the time of Caesar Augustus by way of the governor Quirinius. So, the Roman Empire has this record. Since January December, up to December, these are already Roman calendar in the time of Julius Caesar. Now, it's the time of Augustus Caesar. Specifically, uh, in Bethlehem, the governor is Serenius. So, the record there of this birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is no other birthday recorded in Rome, is December 24, in the midnight. It is already December 25. This was submitted by Joseph and Mary because here in verse 7 and 8, Mary has already given birth to Jesus, his first, firstborn son. You see, friends, it is clear in the Bible. Now, how can we know that the list submitted to the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus by way of Governor Serenius here in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 is indeed December 24 or December 25 Anno Domini 1 AD simply because uh, one of the church historians by the name of Dionysius Exigus in the 3rd century Dionysius Exigus have known as a church historian that the Roman Empire has already the records especially in the time of Emperor Titus of Rome many years after Emperor Caesar Augustus. It is found in the record of the Roman census. It is still there. It, before it was burned, uh, the church historian, 
Dionysius Exiguus discovered that date, that written record of Jesus, this register from Serenius the governor in Bethlehem and submitted to the time of Caesar Augustus. It was preserved in the archives of Rome even in the time of Emperor Titus. So it is really December 25, Anno Domini 1 AD. Some historians would reckon uh, 4 to 5 BC or AD. There is uh, quite a difference because of the reckoning of the old uh, old uh, calendar before it was revised by Julius Caesar. Now it become already the time of Jesus because Jesus Christ was the historical figure which divided history into AD after death of Christ, AD Anno Domini or year of our Lord Jesus Christ and BC before Christ or before the Christian era, or before the Christian century, BCE or BC. So, scholars, uh, according to most Christian scholars who, and church historians, there must be a difference because the fact is that during this time, Caesar Augustus is emperor and Serenius is governor of Syria. Therefore, they have speculated that Jesus was born either 4 to 5 BC up to 4 to 5 AD, there, was, there is a little difference on the year of the birth of our Lord. But we will just assume that Jesus, since he divided BC before Christ and AD, after death of Christ or Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, then we will just designate it as one or the first year, Anno Domini, December 25, Anno Domini, meaning the next year is already the one year after the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ counted. Now, let us continue reading. And there were in the same country shepherds watching and keeping the night watches over their flock. Here, it is Bethlehem. It is not Jerusalem. This is a downhill country uh, far away from Jerusalem, many miles and kilometers from Jerusalem. So, therefore, the fields here are not affected by the, the snow of the winter season. Even, assumedly, it is winter, but they are not still affected. So still, this is high time because for a fact, Caesar Augustus and the governor Serenius would not call a census on a winter. On a winter. Meaning, this, this time, even assuming it's a winter, it's not yet that high, the peak of the winter time. So therefore, people can still go and register like Joseph and Mother Mary. Let us read. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the brightness of God shone round about them, and they feared with a great fear. These are the shepherds. The Catholic tradition knows these shepherds. For example, Shepherd of Hermas and his friends. It is written in the traditions of the Catholic Church, the names of the shepherds and how many shepherds. But the Protestant world does not know who the shepherds are. The Protestant world does not know who are the three kings, Melchor, Gaspar, and Balthasar. Melchor, Gaspar, and Balthasar. That is the name of the three kings. That's why we have the feast of the three kings, Saint Melchor, Saint Gaspar, and Saint Balthasar. And some of the shepherds also in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, identified by Catholic tradition as Hermas the shepherd and his friends. Let us read. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all the people. Uh, you see, friends, Luke chapter 2, verse 10, letter by letter, the angels in heaven said and told the, the shepherds that this today, this night, good tidings, meaning gospel of great joy, shall be to all the people. Meaning not only Israel or, or the Jews, but also the whole world, the Gentiles. So, this is a day of great joy, meaning a celebration. That is why Christmas. Why? And this shall be a sign unto you. The sign is Isaiah 7.14 and Matthew 1.23. A virgin shall give birth to a son, and you shall find the infant, the son, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Math, uh, Isaiah 1 to 3, uh, Israel did not know that the Savior of the world, God made man, John 1, 1, 14, 18, Matthew 1, 1 to, to 23, they did not recognize the God made man, the incarnate God. You shall find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Isaiah 10, 6, a son is given to you, an infant son. Only one son, only one child. His name shall be called God Almighty. Isaiah 8, 8 to 10. Emmanuel, God with us. So we have to gather and celebrate. Isaiah 8, 8 to 10. Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 9, 6. Isaiah 8, 8 to 10. 
And here in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 to 20, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. And it came to pass after the angels departed from them unto heaven. The shepherds said one to another, Let us go over to Bethlehem, and let us see this word that is come to pass, which the Lord has showed to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, and the infant lying in the manger. And seeing they understood of the word that had been spoken to them concerning this child, and all that heard wondered, and all those things that were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things in these words, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard, and seen at this word told unto them. And after eight days were accomplished, the child should be circumcised. His name shall be called Jesus, which was called by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. Now, there is a collaborating evidence that Jesus Christ was born on December 24, midnight. This is already December 25 when we reckoned it or counted on the Roman Julian calendar. Why? Because in verse 21, the celebration of the circumcision of Christ eight days after is done on January 1. That is the Catholic tradition that Jesus was circumcised or the feast of the circumcision of our Lord and the presentation of our Lord in the temple according to Luke. 2 verse 21 after eight days were accomplished that the child should be circumcised that his name will be called jesus which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb you see and after the days of verification according to the law of moses this is also coincides with the day of verification started the day of verification of blessed virgin mary that happened on january 1 the first day of the new year presiding which we assume as 1 a.d or 1 anno domini or either 4 to 5 AD or BC, Anno Domini, that is January 1. So, 8 days before January 1, January, uh, December 31, 30, uh, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25. So, 8 days is false on December 25, 8 days before Luke 2, 21. This collaborates with the record of Genesius Exiguus that the record on file for the census in the time of Serenius the governor of Bethlehem and Caesar Augustus the Roman emperor of the pagan Roman empire during the time of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is in the records of Emperor Titus of Rome in the archives of Titus it is December 25 1 Anno Domini Luke 2 21 because January 1 1 AD or Anno Domini is the time of circumcision and presentation of our Lord according to Catholic tradition. So this already is clear collaborating evidence that the date of the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to church historian Dionysius Exiguus, according to the records in the scriptures Luke 2, 1 to 3, the records of the Roman Emperor, especially in the time of Emperor Titus, it was discovered that this, this record of, of the census in Bethlehem in which Joseph and Mary registered themselves and their child Jesus, which was born on December 25, Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. Anno Domini is derived from Luke chapter 4, verse 19. This is a word, Anno Domini, from the lips of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, Luke 4, 19, to preach the deliverance to the captives and sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of reward. In the Latin, Luke 4, 19, Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. So, Christ was born December 25, 1 AD, Anno Domini. Let us pause for a few reminders. Centericon Ecclesia Good evening, friends. Once again, we are back in our program, Centericum Ecclesia, to think with the church, ang pag-iisip sa kaisipan ng simbahang katoliko. So, what I am now sharing to you is uh, why the celebration of Christmas falls actually, literally, on December 25. When we read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, CCC, page 147, uh, Article 5 to 5, the Christmas Mystery, it was, Jesus was born in humble state, stable, into a poor family. 202, Luke chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, as I have read earlier in the Doveros Version Holy Bible. Simple shepherds were the first witnesses to this event. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. 
In this poverty, heaven's glory is made manifest. 203, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. The church never tires of singing the glory of this night. The virgin today brings into the world the eternal, and the earth offers a cave to the inaccessible. The angels and shepherds praise him, and the magi, magi, advance with the star, for you are born for us, little child, God eternal. 204, Contaction of the Romanos, the Melodist. This is CCC, Catechism of the Catholic Church, page 147 and article 5 to 5. Again, we will come back to the scriptures. Another collaborating evidence, aside from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, the census of Quirinius during the time of the Roman Emperor of the pagan Roman Empire, Caesar Augustus, and then as told by us by the church historian Dionysius Exiguus that it was found in the archives of Roman Emperor Titus, Luke 2, 1 to 3, that the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to the register by his mother Mary and his foster father Joseph, is no other date than December 25, Anno Domini. Collaborated also by Luke 2, 21, in the scriptures, Protestant and Catholic, Lucas 2, 21, that he was circumcised and presented to the temple by his parents, Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, on January 1, the feast of the presentation of Jesus and the circumcision of Jesus, Anno Domini. So eight days before that is also December 25, Anno Domini. And another collaborating third evidence inside the scriptures is that St. John the Baptist, the cousin of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is the forerunner prophet, the last prophet of the Old Testament, to prophesy about the coming of Jesus in Israel, the God-made man. It's also written and in the Bible, Luke chapter 1, verse 34 to 38, this reads, Mary asked the angel, but how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. Living Bible position, Protestant version, the angel replied, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of God shall overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be utterly holy, the Son of God. Furthermore, six months ago, your Aunt Elizabeth, the barren one, they called her, became pregnant in her old age. For every promise from God shall surely come true. And Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. And I'm willing to do whatever he wants. May everything you say, you said come true. And then the angel disappeared. Luke chapter 1 verse 34 to 38. Now, six months before Jesus, December 24, traditionally Catholic tradition also celebrates the birth of John the Baptist on June 24, Anno Domini. Because John the Baptist is only six months uh, older than his cousin Jesus our Lord, the Messiah. So, if you if you count six months after June 24, June, July, August, September, October, November, it falls that six months later, Jesus was born, December 24, midnight. So, the Bible is exact, Luke 136, six months before. Traditionally, the Catholic Church holds the birthday of John the Baptist, according to Catholic traditions in the times of the Apostles, it is June 24, Anno Domini. So, six months later, December 24, and midnight, December 25, already reckoned Anno Domini. It is midnight because we know for a fact it is night time, according to prophecy in Isaiah 8, 8 to 10, Isaiah 1, 1 to 3, and fulfilled in Matthew 2, 1 to 11, and in Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20, because it was on the night time that the shepherds flocked their sheep on the plains outside of Bethlehem, the city of Bethlehem. So it was night time. And also in a passage in Matthew chapter 25, it is written that, that God would also come back during the time of midnight. In Matthew chapter 25, during the, the parable of Jesus Christ about the ten virgins, uh, it reads in verse 4 to 6, But the wise took oil in their vessels with the lamps, and the bridegroom, tarrying, meaning the bridegroom, it, it is symbol of Jesus, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye forth to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Do I Bible, do I Rams version Holy Bible in Matthew chapter 25, verse 4 to 7. Jesus, the bridegroom, came on midnight. Matthew 25, verse 4 to 7. Midnight on December 24, six months after January, uh, June 24, the birth of John the Baptist, his cousin, the forerunner of our Lord, 
and it is already midnight so reckon as December 25 Anno Domini it is very clear in the Bible so now there are many collaborating evidence in history in the scriptures in the Catholic tradition it is only affirmed by the CCC the Catechism of the Catholic Church and here is also one important discovery of mine that is exactly December 25 that Jesus Christ was born when Protestant would challenge us where in the Bible that you can find the, the date December 25 this is the evidence that we can give to them uh, here in the uh, scriptures the Jews during the time of the Maccabees celebrated the feast of the dedication of the temple or the feast of lights in Hebrew or Aramaic they called it feast of Hanukkah Hanukkah, the Feast of Lights or the Dedication of the Temple. We can read in the Holy Bible, Duenas Version, in 2 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 1 to 8, we read the following. But Maccabeus, the purification of the temple and the city, another express of Judas Maccabeus' victory over Timotheus. 2 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 1 to 8, but Maccabeus and they that were with him, by the protection of the Lord, recovered the temple and the city again. But he threw down the altars which the heathen had set up in the streets, as also the temples of the idols. And having purified the temple, they made another altar. And taking fire out of the fiery stones, they offered sacrifices after two years, and set forth incense and lamps and the loaves of proposition. And when they had done these things, they besought the Lord, lying prostrate on the ground, that they might no more fall into such evils. But if they should at any time sin, that they might be chastised by him, more gently and not delivered up to the barbarians and blasphemous men. Now upon the same day that the temple had been polluted by the strangers, on the very same day it was cleansed again, to wit, on the five and twentieth day of the month of Kislev. And they kept at this, this Kislev, Kislev, Kislev in, in English, in modern English, uh, Kislev in in Hebrew and Aramaic, falls on a uh, month of December. That's why Hanukkah, usually in the Roman calendar, Hanukkah is also celebrated by the Jews from December 16 to December 25, 10 days, 9 to 10 days. That is the same celebration as the Misa de Gallio of the Roman Catholic Church or the, the Simbang Gabi, the Feast of Lights. Meaning on night time, we, we, on Misa de Gallio, the church is lighted because we celebrate uh, offering of the temple or the feast of lights, the Hanukkah of the Jews. The Jews who did not accept Christ's birthday on Christmas, they did not celebrate Christmas, yet still they celebrated the feast of lights or the dedication or the offering of the temple to Maccabees chapter 10 verse 1 to 9. And upon the same day that the temple had been polluted by the strangers, on the very same day it was cleansed again to wit on the 5 and 20th day of the month of Kislev. So 25th day of December, on the month of Kislev, and they kept eight days with joy. So eight days in our in our Catholic Church, we celebrate nine days or novena, nine to ten days. This is almost the same as uh, Feast of Lights of Hanukkah, which falls on the twenty fifth day of Kislev and celebrated eight days. And the Jewish calendar falls on the mid of a Roman calendar or Julian calendar or the Gregorian calendar. So from eight days for example in in the calendar today they would celebrate this around uh, uh, second week of december up to the third week so falls in line with our nine days to ten days celebration of our december 16 misa de gallo up to december 25 december 24 for the celebration of christmas so hanukkah in the jews and then Christmas with the Christian Church or the Catholic Church, and they kept eight days with the joy after the manner of the feast of the tabernacles. So they are, they are feasting with the manner of feasting of the tabernacles, remembering that not long before they had kept the feast of the tabernacles, when they were in the mountains and dens like wild beasts. Therefore they now carried boughs and green branches and palms for him that had given them good success in cleansing his place. And they ordained by a command statute and decree that all the nation of the Jews should keep these days every year. So from here, times forth, until the time of Jesus Christ, this was celebrated every year. Now in the, the Living Bible Translation of our Protestant brothers, Living Bible Translation, let us read, the Feast of Dedication of the Temple was this followed in Tumacabis chapter 10, verse 8, 
that there was a decree of uh, that ordained by Ju Judas Maccabeus and the Jews during the time that every year the nation of the Jews, the Jewish nation of Israel, would celebrate this feast of dedication of the temple or the feast of lights Hanukkah every year until the time of Christ. Was there still a celebration of the Hanukkah? which falls on around December 16 or 15 up to December 24, 25th of every year, 25th of Kislev, which is in the Roman and Holy calendar around the third, second to third week of December, around Dece uh, December 15 to December 24. Let us read in John chapter 10, this is the Living Bible Protestant translation. Chap John chapter 10, verse 22 to 23. It was winter and Jesus was in Jerusalem, at the time of the dedication celebration of the temple, he was at the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Hall. So this time, in Jerusalem, it was winter. The time of the dedication or celebration of the temple. So this is the Feast of Lights or Hanukkah, the Feast of the Dedication of the Temple. He was at the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Hall. The Jewish leaders surrounded him and asked, How long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And here in John 10.30, he proclaimed to the Jews that he and his father are one. And the Jews did not accept him. The Jews complained, you were a mere man, have declared yourself to be God, capital G, God. But Christ told them in verse 38, but if I have do, believe them even if you don't believe me, then you will become convinced that the father is in me and I in the father. I and my father are one. John 10.30, he is really God. Because the Jews said, you declare yourself to be God, capital G, John 10, 33, John 10, 30, comma 33, comma 38. The Father is in me, and I am in the Father. To the Jews, it is blasphemous, but to us Catholics, to us Christians, that is the truth, that the, the reality about Christ, that He is God made man, in fulfillment of prophecies in the Old Testament, that God would come to save His people. Now, Jesus was in Jerusalem at that time of the dedication celebration, John 10, 22. The celebration here, the dedication celebration, means December 25 was the usual date for the celebration of the cleansing of the temple. You see, friends, that is exact. From 2 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 1 to 8, the Wairon's version Holy Bible is uh, not contradictory but uh, is in harmony with the 25th of Kislev. They were celebrating the Feast of Lights or Hanukkah. And here in the Living Bible, John 10, 22, 23, December 25, was the usual date for the celebration of the cleansing of the temple. This is also the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because the true light is Jesus. The Jews didn't recognize that the true light to be feasted by the people of God is not the temple itself, the temple in Jerusalem, because the temple will be destroyed. It is only a temporal temple made by human hands. But the true light is Jesus our Lord, the true temple, the resurrection body of our Lord and Savior, in which we also share in the resurrection and the triumph against death. John chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was made nothing that was made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth forth in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to give testimony of the light. So the light is Jesus, that all men might believe through him. He was not the light, meaning John the Baptist, but was to give testimony of the light, who was the light, Jesus Christ. Verse 9, that was the true light, which enlighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. So the light, who is Jesus Christ, made the world. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to make sons of God, to them that believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glorious world of the only begotten by the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see here, friends, John 1, 1 to 12, Jesus Christ is the true light of the world. 1 John 1, 5, God is light, and there is no darkness in him. Light is God, God is light. John, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, and this God who is light is, according to St. John the Baptist, in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 13, is no other than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the true light. So Christians celebrate the true light, the true temple. The true light is Jesus Christ, is also the true temple that we celebrate. That's why the temple of Christ, the body of Christ, humanly speaking, 
His humanity was born because His divinity is from eternity. But His second divine person was literally born as a man, as a human being, into this world, literally. So, it was on December 25 because He is the true temple and the true light. In John chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, Jesus said, Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, referring to his body, not the temple in Jerusalem, which was made by the Jews 46 years. And in three days, I will raise it up. The Jews then said, Six and forty years was this temple in building, and would they raise it up in three days? But Jesus spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen again from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had said. Now, when he was at Jerusalem at the Pasch, upon the festival day, many believed in his name, seeing his signs which he did. But Jesus did not trust himself unto them, for that he knew all men, because he did not that any should give this time with them, for he knew that what was, ma what was was in man. John chapter 2, verse 19 to 25, particularly verse 22. The true temple of God is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is also the true light. First John chapter 1, verse 5, John chapter 1, verse 2 to 13, and John chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. So when we celebrate Christmas, the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, actually we are celebrating the God of light who is Jesus and no other, our Lord and Savior and the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And we are celebrating the true temple which is the body of Christ being born on the manger by Blessed Virgin Mary on December 25, Anno Domini. And in the Living Bible Translation, letter by letter, the Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of the dedication celebration of the temple. He was at the temple. December 25 was the usual date for the celebration of the cleansing of the temple. Therefore, we have proved the date according to the Bible, December 25, really, according to the uh, collaborating evidence from scriptures, from history, from our catechism, from our Catholic tradition, and in the Bible even of Protestant, that December 25, really, Anno Domini, is the true birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Na naman si Bajan dyan, nandito na si Bajan dyan, ato na inihatag niya. Bajan, may gabi ka ni Mug, Merry Christmas, and advance Happy New Year. Salamat, Bajan, may gabi, Merry Christmas, o Happy New Year. Ngan usap nga to sa ato mga kaigsunan, nga nagsubay ni yung programa Centeri Com Ecclesia. Matag Merkulas, 8 to 9.30, nga di pangluhan ni Brother Ramon Gitamundok, former national president sa Catholic Faith Defenders, o ni Brother Albin, o aso usang pangumusta ni Brother Dominic Alcober ingon man ni Brother Solomon Junre nga namina usab karon og manghinaot ko nga ang Ginoo magagiya og magapanalangin kana tong tanan og ato sa daing kauban karon nga atong technician engineer Dong Lapi atong ikapambit sa atong topic Brother Albin nagisgot magkamay tungod sa pagkatao sa tong Ginoo o ingon usab sa itong ebanghelyo na di ko nung ta mabalaka kinanganig uno na ito kanuna yung itong kagulingon no? sa mga pagsulay mga kaguliang no? kahit iha sa itong ebanghelyo ang amahan anak no? ang inuntang pamilya magkagubot no? tungod sa inuntang pagsumpaki panagsumpaki pero inunta ang kabubuton sa ginoo mo og tumanon no tingali do na baka roy gusto magalagad sa ginoo do na baka hay asawa nga aktibo sa simbahan ya masuko ang bana o vice versa ang bana magaktibo sa simbahan ang asawa masuko o anak ba no nga magaktibo sa simbahan masuko ang ginikanan o ang mga bata magyawyaw kay sinanay Uh, nag-alagad sa Diyos o si tatay. Mga nausahay, maglalis, niya, mag-away. No? O niya, mana, kung wala tay igong o ligong pagtuo, pagsalig sa ginoo, pagsurinders, kabubuton sa ginoo, sa nahitabo sa itong kinabuhi, sa itong pamilya, mauna nga, naagyod ang panaglalis, no? niya, usahay, malibanta, kaya dagad dad unta sa atong pagkatawhanon sahay dali ra kay ni Moriak ang ato ang kanang gitawag og volcanic attitude kanang dali kita masuko sinta dayon pero kun mamalandong ta kun kini 
makahimaya ba ni Ginoo kung kini makatabang ba ni sa katong gitinguha is Ginoo nga daghan ang mga ngani no kay dako kayo ang anihunon tinangali kung si tatay nanay dako kay pagandoy siyang anak ni ang iyang anak gustong magalagad sa Ginoo magpare ba o mag full time ba diha sa charismatic mga religious organization uh, isa likway lang na ato ang mga pangandoy sa kinabuhi no atong pangandoy sa atong anak kay kanang atong anak dili gyud atong anak gibilin ra nas Ginoo nato gitagaan taghigayon nga makatuman ta sa kabubuton samahan nga mao ang pag <coughs> higugma sa tong isig ka tao no niya tagaan tag mga anak gibinlanta para atong higugmaon alimahan para paghimaya sa Dios mao na no? kun busy gani atong mga anak busy gani atong mga ginikanan sa paras Ginoo ato gyud ang sabton maanak o maginikanan mabana o maasawa maigsuon kay mo patigbabaw gyud na ang paghimaya sa Dios no tanawa ra gudtong si Mateo didto naglingkod sa lamisa pagingon sa Ginoo nga kuyog kanako away daghang pangutana ditsog lakaw barog unya ni barog ditsog lakaw sudod sa Ginoo nya katusad si Pedro giingnan nga kuyog mo nako kay tudloan ta mo pa, panagat og tao ah, ni biya ni sunod sa Ginoo no ngingon ang Ginoo dili takos ang maglingi-lingi nya musunod nako kanabang magduha-duha ta daghan kay tagkabalaka kay ang tanan ang Ginoo gyud mo ilabaw no kung tahuron nato si nanay ug si tatay unya gitawag tas pagkapari ug pagkamadre ah bahala nagmanghagis nas nanay ug si tatay magpari gyud ta no kay labaw man ang Ginoo kaysa atong ginikanan no kanang tanan dayan-dayan ra na para ra nas kalibutan ang importante ang paghimaya o pagsunod sa kabuhuton sa Dios kay ang tanan iya sa Dios labi na ang atong kinabuhi no? why ato ni ining kalibutan na man akong ang Ginoo mo sangpit sama ni Mateo sama ni Simon nga gi sangpit ni Barog dayon og ni sunod sa Ginoo nya kita karon gi sangpit tas Ginoo sa daghan kaayong pagtawag no pagabag bakaha pagiya baka pagatiman baka sa daghan kay natong angay buhato no nya mamalandong ta magampo ta no panahon sa kagabhion ni atong pangutanon nang Ginoo Ginoo unsa may imong ipabuhat nako nya sulti ko no giyahi ko lamdagi ko no haron matuma nato ang pangandoy sa Ginoo nga daghan kaayong budaghan ang mga ngani kay pagkadako sa anihono no pagkabulahan nato nya daghan pang mga pare ron nga naglihok sa ato ang simbahan din sa Pilipinas no sa uban so ang simbahan mura na lang yung tourist spot no nya magpasalamat ta nga napay daghang mga nisud pagkapare pagka Madre unya kita karon kung nadungog nato ang tingog sa Ginoo ayaw balibari no ayaw kabalaka ayaw pagduha-duha ayaw pag entertaina ng makalahutay bata unsa kay mahitabo sa umaabot kay ang umaabot iya nas Ginoo ang ato mao ang pagtando karon ang pagsunod no si Pedro kuwa man gito siya maghuna-huna nga malimod niyang ginuos makatulo kahigayon no pero nahitabo pero kung ningon patos Pedro astag tiunan ko kutsilyo ani mga sundao no ah, ako yung idinay ang Ginoo unsa ka ha kung mahitabo na wa pag ingon nga sunod nako sunod dayon nanganti pa mga Pedro nga ang mo buhat ana Lord magagis akong espada no mao na nga ang ato ang Ginoo nagtinguha gyud sa pag Uh, sangpit ka nato nga mutubag kita sa iyahang tawag no sa iyahang giha, gihatag nga misyon dinhi ka nato kay bisag naglingko data sa tong balay o naatay gibuhat-buhat sa asa kita rong dapita gitawag kita 
sa pagtampo sa dako kay ang anihuno no? dili lang ni sa pare dili lang ni sa madre kun kitang tanan no sa lain-laing pamaagi mo na nga kun mahimo mapuslan no ang atong kinabuhi tingay sugda nato karon unyang gabi eh, sa pagsangpit sa Ginoo sa pagpangayo og giya Ginoo unsay akong misyon ngining kinabuhi a ah, no dili lang ta driver no dili lang ta sundao dili lang ta abogado doktor o asawa o bana kun dili gitawag kita nga mga misyonero sa pag-alagad og paghimaya sa Dios ato gyud nang tinguhaon no nga maka serbisyo ta sa Ginoo kung kita ulitaw, daga, uh, atong paminahon kung ni sulti bang ginoo nga <coughs> himoon tang madre, himoon tang pare, o lay minister baka, o salmis baka, lektor baka, ato ng buhaton. Mintras, ni apa kita ni ining kalibutan na. Kay pagkasayang, kung mag-audit na ang ginoo, muabot na ang panahon sa pag audit sa matag usa kanato wa niya tay inuntang ikapakita nga atong nabuhat ni ining kinabuhi no nya ang pagbuhat nato dili lang haron ta daigon kun dili ato ng ining gibuhat tungod kay nahigugma kita sa Ginoo kun dili gani na makuyog ang paghigugma sa Ginoo sa atong buhat ay na lang padayon kay wa ginay kapuslanan Unya, di sad na siya mula hutay kay dili man nakaangkla sa gugma. So, ang tanan na itong buhaton, kinanglan ato yun nang iangkla sa gugma mga Diyos o sa atong isig katao. Mga panahon sa mga kasakitan na akanunay ang pagpasaylo. Kay ang nahigugma kamaog yun nang mapasaylo. Sama sa ginoo nga siya nahigugma ka na ito na agyun ay tugbang na pasaylo. Muna, kung dili gani ta kapasaylo wa gita na higugma kay magkuyog yun na ang paghigugma o papasaylo mao nang mga ginikanan dali kay makapasaylo sa ilang mga anak kay nga naman perte yung higugma ah, sa ginikanan ngadto siyang anak oh, mao sa na si undong nagaguros yang gugma ngadtos iyahang inuntang indays kinabuhi mao na kun makasa mukuyog yun na ang pasaylo maosad vice versa si Inday kung naghaguros ang gugma Alad, sa, banana iyahang bana maogin na mo, sunod sad na ang pagpasaylo mga kaigsunan may abot naman ang atong oras o hinautunta nga nining Pasko nga atong mahalad ang indot kay ngagasa maong pagpaningkamot sa pagbuhat o kabubuton sa ginoo sa matag usa ka nato. Una mag-closing prayer ba dyan ato sa Igret o Merry Christmas sa Dadban sa Pinoy Year at mga amigo mga suking higala nga nagsunod yun sa itong programa di na sa Saudi Arabia si Brad Brihido Ver o Dinesa Merry Christmas Brad Ver o gatong makauban din sa Facebook sila Dong Maison Balsamo John Fryer uh, o sila Benjamin Sipada si Brad Rooney Mindana Og uban pa na itong mga amigo din na sa Facebook. Merry Christmas niyo yung tanan. Og bisan sa mga tao nga wala itong mamensyon. O Happy New Year. But dyan, atong closing prayer. Salamat kay Bad Bin. Sa ngalan sa mahan, sa anak, sa Espiritu Santo. Amen. Amen. Langit ng amahan, salamat kayos kay Gayunan. Ngayon yes, Lord Jesus. Ka na mo. Ininglain na usab ng Pasko. Din among gihandom, ang imong dako kay pagkikugma sa katawahan. Bisan sa among pagka malapason, masupilon, ikaw nagpadayag sa imong gugma, sa imong pasaylo, pinaagi sa pagpadala sa imong bugtong o pinanggang anak ng Moses Jesus Kristo. Salamat, langit ng amahan, ining dako kayo nga gasa, nga imong gihatag ka namo, nga mao ang among ginoong Jesus Kristo. Nangayo kami sa pasaylo, o ingan man usab, among gihala diya kanimo ang among mga intentions o sa among kaigsuunan sa nagsubay ni ini programa Sentere Com Ecclesia matag Merkoles yes, ban sa among mga kaigsuonan yes, sa lain-laing dapit sa tibok kalibutan musang gihala di kanimo mo Santo Papa Pope Francis mga kardinalis kabispuhan kaparian kamadrihan sa tibok kalibutan ingon man si Archbishop Jose Palma among obispo iyang kaabag Bishop Dennis Bilerojo Bishop Oscar Florencio og mga kabispuhan 
sa tanang mga SBD ingon man si Father Bobby ug yang kaabag Father Phil Marfil Father Bobby ibisaog sa tanang mga SBD nga mga naglihok sa Southern Province ug sa Luzon Province Ginoo sa tanang mga technician sa DYRF ug sa mga staff ingon man si Brother Ramon Gitamundo Brad Alvin ug sa mga kauban among gihala diya kanimo Ginoo ang mga kalag sa purgatorio sa mga minahan namo nga mihalina ug sa mga kalag nga nakalimtan yes, sa tanang mga masakiton karon nga naa sa tambalanan o sa lain-laing dapit sa ilang mga panimalay among gihala diya kanimo Ginoo labi na katong nanginanglan sa milagro nawad-an sa paglaong naa sa kalibog kapingitan sa mga kasakitan ug sa tanan namo mga balatian Ginoo kalag ug sa lawas among gituboy diya kanimo kinintanan Amo kining gihalad langit ng amahan ang tanan pinaagi sa pasalamat diha ni Hesus Kristo nga imong anak nga among Dios uban sa panabang sa mahal nga birhin ug sa tanang mga anghel ug mga santo sa langit Amen, Amen. Our Father who art in, in heaven, heaven holy be your name your, your kingdom come, come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us, us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Do not bring us to test but deliver us from evil Amen Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of the womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as it ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord Jesus, bless us, heal us, and pardon us as we make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hangtod sa sunod Merkulis, in Telecom Ecclesia, din sa DYRF. Good night and God bless and Merry Christmas and Advance Happy New Year sa Talan. Mau ka to ang tulong manon, in Telecom Ecclesia. Hangtod na usab sa sunod higayon, kinasing-kasing pasalamat.